It's pouring rain, and I'm outside running. I checked my Strava running app on my watch, and it shows that I have reached the half mile point. If I want to keep my 30 days run streak goal going, I need to push through. But I'm feeling fatigued from not getting any sleep the night before, and I'm not gonna make it. In a fast paced world, many of us struggle with overthinking and worry that leaves us feeling overwhelmed or stuck. In this podcast, we will hear stories of successful individuals and have conversations and ways to reach our true potential by embracing every micro detail of our identity, especially the flaws that make us unique. This is your host, Maria Grace Wolk. I'm a Filipino American entrepreneur, psychotherapist, and mom of two boys. And my mission is to amplify diverse perspectives and experiences and inspire your journey to wellness and fulfillment. So what is a run streak? A run streak, according to the United States Running Association, is running at least one mile that is 1.61 kilometers within each calendar days. So you can run more, as I often do, but not less than a mile. So running can be on either the roads, a track, hills, or on a treadmill. In my case, I only run outside because I don't own a treadmill. So my running journey, I was never a runner. I only discovered the amazing benefits of running in my early 30s. Growing up, I was never really into it. I may have cut classes a few times when I knew we had to run a mile that day for PE. But my relationship with running has been a love and hate journey. And back then, mostly hate. It's taken me years to finally use it in a way that it enhances my life. And after having kids, my free time became very limited. And this was the only thing I could do on my own. Yep, because, you know, with young kids, you can't even use the bathroom in peace, right? I know that all the parents out there with young kids, I know that you agree. So it became the me time when I can gather my thoughts, my ideas, and when I can let go of any stress and frustrations that I may be dealing with at that time. I started my run streak during the pandemic when the gyms were closed and we were all sheltered in place. And my family and I have exhausted all the hiking trails and have ridden our bikes on every beaten path. And I just needed to do something to keep me motivated. So I decided to do this December challenge to run at least a mile a day outside for every day of December 2020. And the first few days were easy, right? No sweat. Then December weather got a bit more chilly. I start using heavier blankets overnight and turning the heater on. And I'm lying in bed in the morning with my covers all the way up to my chin, so cozy and warm, and I just don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to get out of the, you know, out in the cold, and I'm dragging my feet to put my shoes on. It is a huge test to my self-discipline and motivation. You know, committing to doing something daily is just... A challenge, especially when there's days like these when it's extra cold and, you know, being in bed just feels so much more cozier and the weather outside does not look inviting at all. So now I'm at the three quarter mile mark. I'm still running. The finish line is closer, but I am even more tired. But that's okay because I know that there are lots of benefits to running. And I start thinking about that. Running has amazing benefits documented in brain research. The forward motion of running turns the brain on. Therapeutic effect is this cocktail of calming neurochemicals that it releases. And also by raising your heart rate, Running changes brain chemistry by increasing the availability that these neurotransmitters like serotonin, GABA, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, that's the BDNF, and 
a group of biochemicals called endocannabinoids. All of these difficult words to pronounce, and I hope that I said them correctly, but probably not. But these are the substances that help produce that calming high a runner feel after a good run. And they call that the runner's high. And it is absolutely real. I'm telling you guys, it feels amazing. When you run, it releases a flood of endorphins into your blood. And these endorphins, often called the feel-good chemicals, they produce the feelings of happiness and pleasure. And of course, there's dopamine, the neurotransmitter for motivation. You know, the increase in mental focus and endurance, it's because of all that dopamine. And to all of my fellow ADHD neurodivergent friends, this is how I get my daily dose of dopamine to put me on an even playing field with the neurotypicals. So I'd like to think that I was built to run because my brain needs it. Running to me is more than exercise. It's a form of freeing my mind and tuning into my soul. When I started my private practice and started seeing back-to-back trauma clients, this became my much-needed self-care. I am sitting on my therapy chair. I am listening to a young mother, and she talks about her painful grief of missing her child. And I am reminded of my kids and how devastating it would be for me if I am not able to be with them. And then in the next hour, the next session, a young Asian man shares his fear and anger after a violent racial attack. And then after the session, my clients would get up and they would leave my office and I am left with that bowling ball weight weight of pain that they have entrusted me with. And people ask, right, how do I do it? How can I listen and hold people's pain? And all of those traumatic life experiences and stories. And the truth is, I am affected by their stories. I am human after all. I'm not like the blank slate therapist in the earlier days of psychotherapy. I'm highly sensitive and I am so empathetic, emotionally empathetic, that that often is a gift, but also a curse. But you know, running, running is a gift. And that's how I do it because running helps me release all of those pain and the suffering that my clients have experienced. They, they, bring it in my office, they process it in my office, they leave it with me, and I am able to release it out of my body through exercise, through running, through meditation, through all forms of self-care that I practice. Then there are those moments when I'm standing in the kitchen and I'm, and right after my kids have left for school that day and I'm seeing the dishes in the sink, right? And I can hear the laundry dryer beeps done. You know, that's my third load today. I also have notes to catch up on for work, home projects I started that needs my attention. There's the grocery list. I don't even know where to begin. And I start to feel overwhelmed because I just don't know how I'm going to do it all. I could stress out about it, but instead I would, you know, put my shoes on. I would lace up and I would run. and you know what? It's like magic. I come back and I can give myself grace and see everything as a much more manageable list that I can prioritize. And I realize I don't have to do it all. I just need to do what's the most important for that day. And these are just enough for me to want to keep running in the morning or any time of the day to motivate me. And I know that by the end of my run, I'm going to feel like this. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to feel this motivation no matter how crappy my day is going after a good run. I feel so much better. Oh, and another important benefit for running outside is that Nature alone has so many benefits. When you're feeling stressed or anxious, nature offers a stimuli as it captures and calms your mind. If you're feeling uninspired, a change of scenery is a great way to get your creative juices flowing. And studies have shown that spending days in nature 
improved problem solving skills by 50%. Because when you're surrounded by towering mountains or the breaking waves of the ocean or running rivers, you will always get that sense of wonder that you are a part of this amazing beauty of nature. And when you can get out in nature, walk, run, hike, you will notice the difference in your mental health instantly, especially when you stay consistent. So I say get out there, take a break, and breathe in a dose of nature. And I I just love how now anywhere I go during my travels, I find the time to get my run in. And it's also a way for me to explore the surroundings of a new place. It's just been amazing. And I especially appreciate my friends and family who really supports me in my running journey. I know that it can be challenging when we're traveling. They know I have to get my run in, so they either join me or they wait for me. There was this one run with my family and we were in our car in Lake Tahoe and we were stuck in traffic. We were headed back to our cabin from snowboarding that day And I haven't gotten my run in since we had to leave super early that morning. So I decided to save it, save it for the late afternoon, thinking we would get back early enough when it was still daylight. But heading back, there was a pretty bad accident. So the traffic was just bumper to bumper and it was getting pitch black dark outside. And I just kept thinking, I need to get my run in. I need to get my run in. So we ended up parking our car in you know, on the side in a snowy parking lot. And I ended up just running around the perimeter of the parking lot while my boys waited for me in the car. And I probably had to run like 10 laps to get a mile in. And after my run, my fingers and my nose, the tip of my nose were frozen by the time I was done. And I believe my sweat glands were also frozen because I didn't even sweat at all. And I was super bundled up. But I did get it in. I got my mile in that day. And then there are also times when I was in Las Vegas with my sisters and they all joined me for my morning run. I've gone to Yosemite and did my run there with my sister. Hawaii with my friends um, and San Diego for a friend's bachelorette party. Oh, and even though my friends were partying the night before celebrating, they still got up super early that next morning to run with me and my kids and husband when I'm feeling extremely unmotivated to go out or maybe I'm a little under the weather it really helps to help them join me for that extra boost of energy to get out and I'm not gonna lie I do have to bribe my kids sometimes with some robux but hey you gotta do what you gotta do and honestly I don't think I could have continued my run streak without the support of my family, my friends, including all of my social media community. My social media friends, when I post my runs, really helps me stay consistent and a way for me to stay accountable. So to those of you who are following my running journey on my social media, I I appreciate you. I appreciate all the motivational um, words that you send me to to help me stay committed and motivated. I appreciate that. I am truly, truly grateful for all of you. So I make it over the finish line, but I'm not going to complete day 30 of my 30 day run streak goal. I have now completed day 676. Day 30 was almost two years ago and somehow I managed to keep going. I mean, I don't run to break any records or to try to be fast, although that would be nice. But I run because the taste of the finish line and just that feel good runner's high feels amazing because I know that I did that all on my own. I run because I can. I have a brother-in-law named Anthony who runs crazy miles. He does the 50-miler races, and he's done this 12-hour nonstop running where he completed 52 miles within that 12 hours, and I believe it was just around one track 
that's that would probably drive me insane. And he is actually the person who has encouraged me and my husband, Scott, to do more running. And he's been encouraging us to sign up for a full marathon. And while I can say I'm a runner, I've done a bunch of half marathons and I have this ridiculous run streak going for me. I still don't dare to run a full marathon. I honestly feel like I would break. A half marathon is already such a challenge for me. So a full 26.2 miles, twice as long. I can't even imagine myself completing it. I'm thinking I probably need a good coach for several years first or to help me train for it. I may even need some physical therapy to make sure that I am, you know, my legs and my knees are in good condition to be able to, you know, stay alive during the run. But for now, I am good with just taking it one day at a time. And maybe I'll know when I'm ready, but I am not holding my breath just yet. I just know that I still have so much more room to grow and mountains to climb. So for now, I am going to leave you with this quote. One run can change your day. Many runs can change your life. And that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Please do let me know if you have any questions or if you started a run streak. I would love to know how that's going for you. Feel free to send me a message on Instagram. You can find me there or mariagracewolk.com. I would love to hear from you. So until next time, be brave and own your journey. If you resonate at all with the stories on this podcast and you're thinking about a change in your current situation, in your career, in your relationship, or maybe even in yourself, what's holding you back from taking the first step? Find out by taking the What's Your Biggest Self-Sabotage quiz that you can find on my website at mariagracewolf.com. Until next time, stay kind and own your journey. Thank you again for your time today. If you enjoy this podcast, please be sure to hit subscribe, rate, and review. I would so appreciate it. The high rate and reviews will help others find the podcast so we can amplify, normalize, and break the mental health stigma. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host or the guest are providing legal, mental health, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one. This podcast does not substitute for personal professional services.